The Beatles were craftsmen on their instruments and they made a lot of research, especially in the studio with the help of George Martin. And they were able to play some fairly complicated guitar parts that even the most skilled musician may have some hard times to cope with. And this one specifically of the Mother Nature sound that Paul played in the White Album may sound simple, but upon close inspection, it reveals a, an incredible quantity of nuances and details that are really deceptive. You know that I always wanted to give you new Beatles stuff, new perspective on their music. So today I will give you the bolts and nuts and the big picture as well of the, what Paul played in Mother Nature Sun. So you can have a better understanding of how they crafted their music in a way that you can enjoy reproducing it or even simply listening to it. For this song, again, we will use the Martin D28, the same one that the Beatles bought in uh, 1968 and um, the one that they used to make a, a lot of their historical recordings. So let's start with the big picture. Uh, the very first thing we have to understand when trying to reproduce the Mother Nature Sun and many other of Paul's tunes is how he plays with his left hand, which is in my case my right hand. So the movement that he makes with his hand, with his finger, which is this one and must be exactly this one to get the same exact sound of the record. Let me show this one to you. With an accent on the last strumming, downward strumming. This strumming is very important for what comes next. What comes next is um, something incredible that I'm sure it will give you a brand new perspective and vision about this song in general when you uh, go back to and listen to it. Is that Paul is plucking the strings in a way that he sort of uh, uh, pretends that there are two different guitars playing in two different you know takes performances, but it's just one playing, and uh, it does like this. With his index finger, he mainly plucks the second, the third, and the fourth string, just like this. Okay, he just slightly touch the high E string. And then with the other fingers, he creates a melody up there like this. The strumming happened is right here in the position of the last circle of the D28 uh, uh, rosette here. This will go throughout all the whole song. And there is even something more here. Let me show this to you. When the song starts, the two, uh, let's call it performances, are very separated. So we have... Okay, the more the, the song progresses, the more the introduction progresses, the most it moves up to the higher strings because this, the melody becomes more complex, okay? So in the beginning, they are very separated. Okay, later on in the introduction, the two types of strumming merges, the melody and the rhythm merges a little more, listen. This way, and I'm sure you realize that this is not simple to play, but is not even simple to detect in the song. I'm sure that few of you did ever notice that. It's just like two guitars playing different parts. It's just one guitar, so it makes the, 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 the song sound in a way more articulated, even if it's just one performance. And this kind of strumming is not the only thing you have to think about when you are performing the song. You notice that there are a lot of the legatos here, so... Ok, 
okay? And again. And again. And again. And this one is even more complicated because you have to make a... Take away the finger like this and put it back again. Okay? Then the verse comes. During the verse, Paul again uses this technique of uh, uh, pretending there are two guitars playing. One making the rhythm and one making a sort of uh, melody with the legato. So what's happened again is that he plucks the string like this, mainly touching the second, the third and fourth string and then sometimes you go up there when it's time to perform this melody that you are going to hear. Then he goes here. Open E here, okay? And then the passage that happens on the second verse, from the second verse on, is... Uh, and they are muted. Like this. And then... This is our A with this high A on the fifth fret on the high E string. This one again requires some attention because you have to plug to, to play this, this uh, fourth stuff. You have to plug the string, the two strings, with your fingers going up. Then, and here we have a very strange legato on the first, uh, the first time that he plays this. Second time it changes it. This is variation. And if you pay care, Paul applies a specific cadence to the part here. Then there is the middle eight part, I call it middle eight. I hope you do too. There are a lot of tutorials around and uh, I, I, I couldn't find just one that plays this one correctly. And you will be probably asking yourself, how do dude knows where the chords are played and that the other tutorials are wrong? I know this one and I'm going to tell you why, because I have a secret that I'm going to share to you now. How do I know if a part is you know, played here and then up here or vice versa? I know this, and this is a far from free trick from this video, um, because I hear the sliding. So I know that if I hear a sliding in the middle of a part, and I go where the sliding uh, goes, and I find the next position. I not only know where the part goes in the fretboard, on the fretboard, I know how they are played. In this case, I hear this sliding here. And you can hear it too if you slow down the song in the part that goes. Okay, so I know that he's playing with a, a very little barre here on the, um, on the second fret, uh, the D. And then up here, and then here. And I know that I'm going back now because I hear this. Okay, going back. So you got the trick? attention here because there's no tutorial around to show you this and then here a G Legato. So, what's the matter here? Is that there are mainly three parts in one. So it's uh, the melody and then the D plucked every time, a D pedal here. Okay, continuously going on. And then these things. 
And then there is a soul. I will give a very quick insight of how it's played. You can recreate this one to, uh, on your own. Uh, very fast. So it's played like this. And then uh, the part uh, here it goes. And then. Okay. This is the part that's the same that there are in the verses. And then. But a simple scale. And now pay care. We are going to play this one here, not here. And again, I know this one because I hear the sliding. And so by looking at the sliding, listening to the sliding, I know where it's going on the fretboard. Okay, so. And then. And this has a vibrato. Okay, very far, very strong. And then the ending, everybody plays the D7 here, but it's not a D7 on the guitar. The Paul, what Paul plays is a D, a standard D, like this. And then the D7 is played by the brass arrangement. Okay, the brass is brass, brass arrangement. Ottoni. Uh, so, like this, okay? <laughs> Good. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Let me know if it gave you a new vision on the song. This is my goal. My goal is to have you enjoying even more what the Beatles did. Because it's an endless, amazing, magical, mysterious trip. So, see you next video. Ciao, bye.